Hello, everybody. You are watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Thanks for joining the show because we're going to talk about stuff that they might not really talk about in the corporate media. So Andrew Yang, who I've talked about him on several of the post-debate shows, the wrap-ups that I've done. Most recently, I did one with Ron Placone. And there's a lot about Andrew Yang I like. I'm glad he's introducing UBI, universal basic income, into the conversation. I think this early stages of the debate, I want more people pulling the party more to the left. There's some reservations I have about the guy. He's an entrepreneur. Um, you know, UBI seems to be his only answer for a lot of people. <laughs> What's your foreign policy? Well, $1,000 a month. Um, and... I like UBI, and, and in the last debate, it was ridiculous that he was arguing. There was a debate over UBI or federal jobs guarantee, and as I've said uh, on this show, uh, in a Green New Deal, you have both. You have a federal jobs guarantee and universal basic income. If there's people like stay-at-home parents or whatever, they get UBI. People that want to work, you know, in a Green New Deal, they get a job. He's like, people don't want to work for the federal government. Oh, man, of course you say that. An entrepreneur that works in Silicon Valley, all his friends are millionaires and billionaires. Oh, who would want to work with the federal government? I don't know. Somebody driving for Grubhub for 12 bucks an hour with no health care, he want to work for the federal government for $25, $30 an hour in full benefit package, making wind turbines or solar panels, you would want that job. So that's a thing I'm critical about Andrew Yang about. He went on... Um, Catherine Ball's show on the Hill and made this really said we should with a, with with using Portugal has this very uh, progressive way of dealing with like heroin addicts and he's like that's how we should we shouldn't criminalize them and he's got some some pretty good stance and he and he said I, I want to end Citizens United I, I we got to get rid of Citizens United so then why are you doing this Andrew thumbs up to a super PAC. Yang will be the only, only Democratic candidate to embrace an outside group with the ability to raise unlimited funds. That's from two days ago, just, uh, October 23rd. So do you think you're going to be president, Andrew? You've, you've got this Yang gang. You've, got, you've raised over $10 million of individual donors. That's a good thing. Do you think you can actually be president? It's a long shot, but you know, you make a compelling case to be in somebody's cabinet, you know? And again, I'm glad you're pulling this message forward. When we were talking in the last debates about the Supreme Court, like we can't just keep adding new members to the Supreme Court. I remember Castro said, why don't we pull people up from the appellate courts? Or somebody else said, why don't we have term limits? I think even Yang said that. Those are great conversations. That's what a healthy debate is. Democracy is actually about debating issues in a reasonable manner. But this sounds, this is corporate Democrat action. This is like, this is sellout business. Are you selling out, Yang? He's now the only Democratic presidential primary candidate embracing a favored tool of political insiders, a super PAC. What super PAC is backing him? The group backing Yang's presidential bid, Math PAC, is run by Will Haler, a Democratic operative who previously worked as a senior advisor to the DNC. Oh, boo. The, is this the DNC that... Um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz used to run, and then she was fired by the DNC after the Podesta emails revealed that she cheated, and then Hillary hired her to work on her campaign. Is it that DNC? Is this? It's the same DNC. That one. It's the DNC that uh, the P Podesta emails uh, revealed all types of criminality. That DNC. Is this the one Tulsi stepped down from when she saw the cheating in 2016 and endorsed Bernie? And now Hillary's trying to get payback from her, which is, of course, backfiring because Hillary's a lunatic who just Russia blames Russia for everything because she's a part of the ruling class who makes profits from war. She's a huge warmonger, um, voted for the war in Iraq, voted for the Patriot Act. This is as a senator, as secretary of state. There were 20 countries that donated to the... Um, Clinton Foundation that then all got military contracts. When Hillary was Secretary of State, she overthrew, it was her plan to go kill Gaddafi. She said in an interview, we came, we saw he died, 
and laughed about killing Qaddafi. Now there's open slave markets because Qaddafi's dead and there's a power vacuum. Is it that DNC? Is it that DNC? Seth Rich, who almost assuredly was the one that gave the Podesta emails to WikiLeaks, who was mysteriously killed, a, ro a robbery gone wrong, they stole nothing from him, the police didn't investigate anything of it, it just went away. That DNC? So you want to deal with those, that DNC. This is how you're the... So don't give me this crap that you're some outsider. Don't, I'm sick of saying here, it's like when Trump said, I'm an outsider, I'm going to drain the swamp. Yeah, he drained the swamp and filled it up with sewage. Is that what you're going to do, Yang? If you become president, are you just going to fill it full of Wall Street guys and Silicon Valley entrepreneurs that are just like... What, why, why does an entrepreneur think he knows better? And if you're such a smart entrepreneur, why do you need this guy, these people backing you? Here's what they said. MathPack will work to ensure that Americans know that Andrew Yang is our best chance of defeating Donald Trump. Come on. Andrew Yang, you're the one who said, when we're talking about Trump, he's winning. We've got to talk about solutions that help people. So expand on your UBI. You seem like a smart guy. Why are you, why are you doing this? This, I, this makes me not support you at all. You take super PAC money. It's like, it's like Elizabeth Warren is like, well, I, I'm not going to take money, but I will. It sort of will, but I won't. And were you a Republican back in the 90s like her? Probably. You probably liked Reagan's trickle-down economics that put people on the streets. And come on, man. Come on. Come on. I'm sitting here in a tight t-shirt in my apartment and I can smell bullshit. Healer said his group agreed that super PACs were a problem, but math PACs work was essential. <laughs> to make, quote, make sure that we are enacting election reform measures that prohibit this type of work from happening. So you're trying to prohibit the thing that you're doing. You're a super PAC. You say super PACs are bad, but then you're, you're raising money to stop... Is, is Purdue Pharmaceutical, they're the ones that are committed to ending the opioid epidemic? Purdue Pharmaceutical, the ones that just had to pay a $500 million lawsuit in Oklahoma because they were lying about the addictive nature of Oxycontin? Is that, are you that type of... <laughs> you know who we, need to help, who we need to help address the serious drug problem in... Uh, in America is the Mexican and Colombian drug cartels. Let's put them in charge of it. They'll fix it. They'll prohibit this type of work from happening. It's, it's, just, it's a corporate double speak. I hate this corporate double talk. Yang, do you have a mission statement? Do you have core values as part of your shut up? Be a bold leader. Be a bold leader. This is not bold leadership. This is sellout corporate nonsense. You seem smarter than that. But you just want to be president. You're getting a little taste. You want the super jet. You probably like private jets. You do this calculated, I'm flying coach to show I'm a regular person. Oh God, that's just like the rolling up the sleeves and everybody giving that stupid story about their father or grandmother. My grandmother worked on a shoe factory. You know what? We all have parents and grandparents. And you know what? They all had jobs. And 50, 60, 100 years ago, they had jobs that were more just basic. No one was working for a Silicon Valley tech firm in the 1920s. That didn't happen. When my grandmother grew up in a one-room schoolhouse in Illinois, that's everybody lived, went to school that way back then. She's not, that doesn't make me more folksy and better. My grandfather was a butcher in Idaho. Is that why I'm a vegetarian? I never met the man. So shut up. Do the right thing. Don't be like a typical politician. I thought you were not a typical politician. So it's all just a gimmick, the no tie Riding coach on a thing. I ride coach because I don't have the money for first class. If I had the money, I'd fly first class because coach sucks. It sucks. The first day a candidate accepts the help of a single candidate pair super PAC in the Democratic primary is the last day their campaign is truly a grassroots movement, said Tiffany Mueller and Citizens United president.
You say bold stuff about drug reform and we should do what Portugal's doing. Introducing everybody gets $1,000 a month, that's a bold plan. That's a bold, I'll give it credit, it's a bold plan. Is it perfect? I don't know, I'm not an economist, but that's a bold plan. This is, this is business as usual. Gotta take super PAC money. It's what when Liz Warren says that crap. When Liz Warren says that bullshit, oh, we gotta beat Trump. She says that I'm not for unilateral disarmament. Oh, shut up. So you'll sell out to big donors in the general. You won't take it in the primary so you can trick people into thinking you're a progressive, but then you'll take it in the general. So are you, are you a big sellout? Is this the bold leadership we, we should expect from Andrew Yang if he's president? Remember Andrew when FDR went, I want to give every American a job because all these people are out of work from the Great Depression, but it's not that practical. It's not pragmatic. I mean, how are we going to pay for it? <laughs> Susan B. Anthony, she's fa that famous quote of hers of women deserve the right to vote, but it's a little too complicated right now. We'll probably get to it in the 40s or the 50s, you know? Remember that? MLK said, I have a dream, but it's just that a dream will never accomplish it. So we're always going to have Jim Crow laws and segregation. Sorry. Progress is in a straight line. Sometimes it happens in unexpected ways and in short periods of time. This sounds like a guy rationalizing that he's taking now super PAC money. Not take, why can't you just run a grassroots campaign? So you weren't getting the donations and instead of going, look, I knew I would never have a chance at winning. I just wanted to get my message of UBI out there and hope that, that whoever gets the candidacy, who gets the nomination for the party, if they become president, I hope they implement it because it's a thing that would help out a lot of people. And automation is a real thing that's happening and people are gonna lose their jobs. Good for you. Nope, I'm gonna double talk my way because I wanna, I think this, Will Haler is gonna give me the presidency so I'll take whatever crooked super PAC money I can get. Let's see what he, how he actually responded to this. I want to show you what, what Yang actually said during this. It's, it's like ridiculous how much of a bummer it is. Here's Andrew Yang. This is from the Huff Post article. This was tweeted out by Nicole. Uh, Ganga, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. He says he knows very little about the math pack. Okay. Let's hear it. Invest accordingly. We all know we have a broken campaign finance system where there's a flood of money uh, and it's overrun our policies, our politicians. I know very little about the math bank, genuinely. <laughs> um, if it's the case that we have the rules that we have and people want to help uh, support my message and my campaign, um, you know, given the system we have right now, they're free to do so. Um, but I genuinely know very, very little about uh, the, the math pack. I just hope that they, uh, that they are aligned with my vision for the country and they invest accordingly. See Mm. We have a broken system and corporate money, but I'll, sure, I don't know who they are, but if they want to give me a million dollars, I'll take it. And when the math pack tells you to vote a certain way, you will. Because you, you don't want to give up that money. I mean, hey, you probably fund your entrepreneurial stuff with venture capitalist money, and you got to play their game, right? Can't piss off the sponsor. If this show was sponsored by Math Pack, I couldn't do this segment. I couldn't do this segment, right, Andrew? Right, Andrew? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, Andrew. Ah, oh, dude. You're a full-blown bummer. <laughs> I'm so sick of that shit. I, we can just see through it. it. Can't you just see through it? If you're getting your news at YouTube, you can see through it. I can see through it. Uh, it's, such, it's, it's bullshit. It's what the woman, it's, it's what the woman said. The first, the minute, I'm going to read that quote again. Let's read that quote again. Let's read that quote again. The first day a candidate accepts help of a single candidate super PAC in the Democratic primary is the last day their campaign is truly a grassroots movement.
and Citizens United. Tiffany Muller said that. So you're done. You're not a grassroots movement anymore, Andrew. Don't give me the Yang gang. Give me the math pack. That's who you are. Bernie has a grassroots movement. Tulsi has a grassroots movement. You used to have one, but you just sold it out to the math pack. A DNC insider. Will Haler's your buddy. Yeah. Why don't you go cozy up with Zuckerberg because he seems to like Buttigieg or, you know what I mean? Why don't you do that? Why don't you, maybe Hillary's got some great advice. Why don't you go listen to Hillary, dude? Because this, this election, I don't think is, I don't think you can handle this quite honestly. I think it's a little above your thousand dollar a month pay grade. Just go back to being an entrepreneur and just, you're not a progressive. Don't tell me that you're a progressive because you know what you say? You say, I reject the money. I don't want it. I don't want their money. And you know what? Just even, even if you didn't believe that, even if you're ethically don't care, you don't have much of a soul, you just want to be a president or a powerful politician, or now more people know, who, I didn't know who you were until this election, so now we know who you are. Maybe now we'll buy your book after the campaign ends or your new product you're going to try to sell us and weigh good for you. At the very least, from a strategy standpoint, if you come out and say, I'm not accepting this money. This is part of the problem in politics. And I, if they want to support me, each individual can donate to me up to the individual minimum. I don't want this money. See how Tulsi's reacted to some of this stuff? Bernie has a heart attack. Oh, he's done. He's old. He goes, yeah, I had great health care, which is why we need Medicare for all. He just keeps hitting his issue and his people support him. And that's why AOC backed him. So AOC... These women of color don't back the only Asian guy running and then you go get super PAC money? Mm, dude. <laughs> Thanks for selling out, dude. You want to come on the show, I'm going to ask you some really straight questions that I know you don't want to answer, so there's no way... You got the stones to answer this question. Your campaign manager, if they come across, is going to be like, don't talk to that guy, Graham, because I'm going to call you on this bullshit. Nobody pays me. I don't work for a news channel. You know who supports me? My grassroots movement. A super PAC doesn't fund this show. My viewers fund this show. I'll tell you what, Andrew Yang, why don't you give me that million dollars and I'll show you how to spend it the right way for the right reasons because you're not going to be president and you have no bold leadership now that you've sold out. You're a corporate Democrat. Why don't you just say Medicare for all needs some private provisions for healthcare industries? Why don't you say that nonsense? Yeah? Why don't you just take, why don't you be like Robert Francis O'Rourke and take money from the oil lobby? That's what he does. Or Hickenlooper, that other jackass that takes oil money. I don't know, did he drop out yet? He should, and so should you. This isn't for you. Just, you sold out, dude. Thanks for supporting the show, folks. You can support me at mathpack.gov. No, I don't get money from those idiots. Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. Or you can support what I'm doing for as little as $5 a month. I don't get money from super PACs because I'm not a soulless sellout. I, I always am so amazed what it's like being a gutless coward. What is it like? What's that like being a gutless coward? I've had times where I'm afraid. I've had times where I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. But I've never been a coward. To, like, not as an adult. I remember doing some stuff as a kid, teenager, where I was, Ugh, and I was like, I look back, I'll never be a gutless coward again. I'll never be a gutless coward. If you're not a gutless coward, folks, you can go to uh, rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. It's a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. Uh, and you can like and subscribe and share these videos all the way out there. Make sure those idiots at the Math Pack and the DNC watch them. Tag the, tag the DNC and Andrew Yang on this video. Man, you're going to look at your kids and your wife and say, yeah, daddy had to take the million. I don't know much about it, but I, gotta, I can't say no to a million dollars. Oh, daddy, I thought you said you were running a grassroots movement. Go to bed, pumpkin. The world's complicated. <laughs> Don't ask daddy complicated questions. Yang gang, math pack. Now it's just called Yang pack, math pack Yang to get the gang out of there because you just said no to your grassroots movement. Instead of donating to Andrew Yang, 
donate to my show because I'll actually put some truth out there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Come see us on the road. Uh, GrahamElwood.com for all the tour dates. Ron Placone and I are doing the Progressive Comedy Tour in Australia in November. And December, we're doing uh, Ventura, California. December 13th, December 14th, we're doing the Sycamore Tavern in Hollywood. And in 2020, we're going all over the place. We've got Tucson, we've got um, San Francisco, we're going to Orlando, we're going to Portland, we're going to Seattle, and we're adding cities and dates all the time. Where Ron and I are gonna be out at least one weekend a month every week, every month in 2020, if not two, two weekends a month. So go to GrahamElwood.com for all my tour dates. And remember, Super PAC makes you a sellout.